Almighty Thanos. I, Loki, Prince of Asgard. Odin's son. Loki wants to be king, and for him to believe it, other people have to too. He wants to be equal to Thor, so he feels the need to convince his father. And he also wants to be a villain, and that requires him to convince his brother. Loki is a character who is all about untangling an identity that has roots and preferences in various other repositories of meaning. That sounded a lot more pretentious, but the point is, Maurice Holbrecht once argued that all memory is collective memory because even our most personal memories are determined by the groups that we live in, since we all need to operate within social codes. So the purpose of this essay is to examine how Loki explores the friction from holding two different sets of memories from two different inherited identities, and the tragic paradox that he ends up having to deal with. So, this should be fun. It's not that I don't love our little talks, it's just... I don't love them. I'm coordinate search and rescue. On my way down to coordinate search and rescue. We'll never be... When we're introduced to Loki, he's with his brother and his father listening to a story about his role and his future. Only one of you can ascend to the throne, but both of you were born to be kings. This moment establishes the infrastructure that his entire life is built on, a losing competition, where simply being next to the energetic and adventurous Thor unavoidably pushes him into the periphery. Therefore, Loki's social identity is made up of a conflict of connections, where his connection with his brother prohibits him from identifying himself with his father. All of this is symbolized with the opening ceremony. Thor is at the center of the event, and Loki is just sort of there in the corner. How we see him is ironically how Loki sees himself, so it makes sense that Loki's journey properly begins with him screwing Thor over by goading him into inciting a war and then getting exiled. Penetrate Asgard's defenses once. Let's just say they won't try again. Next time with an army. Exactly. There's nothing you can do without defying father. Loki spent his whole life as an observer of Thor's life, so he's able to use context as his weapon. He may not be able to reach up to Thor's status, but he can make himself bigger by pushing Thor down. And everything works out. Thor's nostalgia for the glory of war is punished, but his life is always an unwinnable competition, so he loses everything. Love his son. Love his son. Even when Loki is at the center of his world, he gets pushed out because now he carries two sets of identities, two sets of memories that opposes his entire life's continuity. He is Loki Odin's son, the son of Odin and the heir of Asgard, while also Loki Laufey's son, the son of a frost giant invader. And because of this contradiction, it robs him of his own context, ironically. What, because I, I, I'm the monster who parents tell their children about at night? Loki's solution is to forsake his race identity by killing Laufey and destroying Jotunheim in order to secure his grip with his cultural identity because everything is viewed very statically. Why have you done this? To prove to father that I am a worthy son. When he wakes, I will have saved his life. I will have destroyed that race of monsters and I will be true heir to the throne. Loki doesn't feel like he can be involved in multiple groups, he feels like he can only move from one into another. Which is ironically the same flaw and criticism thrown at Maurice Holbrecht's whole collective memory thesis. You know, the, the dude I referenced at the beginning. Because there's an over-concentration on social structures above the individual. And that's the tragedy of Loki's journey in Thor 1. He's a character who doesn't see himself as an individual, but as subject to the authorship from the forces around him. I'm not your brother. I never was. Loki, this is madness. Is it madness? Is it? 
He's a character who's a victim to a lie that he told himself. Being Loki the son to an adopted father who accepted him without question and being a brother to someone who never ever treated him any differently isn't good enough. He can't ever convince himself that any of it was sincere because he can't look at himself sincerely. He only sees a little man who is always pushed into the periphery. Even his own shared memories is plagued by this connective inequality. You know, it all makes sense now why you favoured Thor all these years. Because no matter how much you claim to love me, you could never have a frost giant sitting on the throne of Asgard. He wanted to be king not because he wanted power, but to show he could be worthy himself. Loki doesn't declare himself as Odin's son, but vaguely just as a man from Asgard. I am Loki of Asgard. Which is a small but very crucial detail in his character because his self-concept is now defined not by who he is, but who he isn't. Laufey doesn't really mean anything to Loki, apart from it means he's inherited the political authority of a ruler. It is my birthright. But he doesn't really want to rule Jotunheim or even look like a frost giant. He still walks around in Asgardian fashion. Therefore, the continuity that defines him is still the same sense of identity from his childhood. And this is apparent if you break it down into the self-concept theory. His ideal self is still Thor. It's one of the reasons why he wants to conquer Earth. So you take the world I love as recompense for your imagined slights. It's a way to emotionally hurt Thor and it's also because he wants to be recognised in a similar way. His self-image is of Laufey now, so he acts as the monstrous invader and his entire self-esteem is built on his angry rejection of his inherited identity. He is whoever other people think he is, and this is what Coulson notices in his final moments. Where is my disadvantage? You lack conviction. He lacks conviction because he doesn't really believe in what he's doing himself. Marvel officially revealed that Loki was being mind controlled by the Scepter during this whole time, which makes this whole framework very much more literal, but regardless, either way, he's a character who has no sense of authority over his identity, because his sense of self is always in need of a reflection. You think this madness will end with your rule? It's too late. So, entering into Dark World, this is broken down by his connection with his mother. Our social relations are premised on shared past, and his relationship with Frigga is the only connection that he's unwilling to lose. She's the only person who pays attention to him during Thor's ceremony. She pleads for him during his trial, and she gives him books while he's imprisoned. The books I sent, do they not interest you? Frigga is the only continuity that he acknowledges because she's the only person that doesn't make him feel like he simply exists in the periphery. And this is the paradox of Loki's life. He can't ever feel like the centre of his own life if he remains as an Odin son because Thor and Odin will always overshadow him, but he can have his own space of meaning if he identifies himself as Laufey's son. But that means lying to himself because he doesn't want that. Always so perceptive about everyone but yourself. Therefore, Frigga's death is to an extent more traumatic than even his biological discovery because losing his mother is non-negotiable. Where previously he could say, I'm not Thor's brother and I'm not Odin's son, knowing that they'll always be there. Did you mourn? We all did. Now he can't say Frigga is my mother and know she's listening. The context that defines him is destroyed and he's forced to build a new identity. And he finds it with Thor again. When do we start? Being a brother again is an opportunity to be Frigga's son again, while it also offers him a chance to reinvent himself, which is why he pretends to be Captain America for a second. Hey, wanna have a rousing discussion about truth, honor, patriotism? Or enjoys bantering with Thor and why he fakes his death. He builds himself a new identity through taking ideas from other people and he loves it. Because finally he's being creative with his own memory and identity. He's become an author finally. 
she wouldn't want us to fight. Well, she wouldn't exactly be shocked. He's not Loki Odin's son or Loki Laufey's son, he's Loki. The beloved hero who avenged his mother and died in the arms of his brother. So he's okay with ruling Asgard as Odin, he doesn't need his identity to be reflected back to him to feel recognised. At the end of Dark World, sinister music plays as Loki secretly becomes king. And then in Ragnarok, he's just sort of messing around, indulging himself as Odin and watching plays of himself. Oh shit. Ah, my son Thor has returned. Which on one hand is very clearly a retcon, but it's also a joyfully wonderful way to establish a new Loki who's recovered from his trauma. The death of his mother has been successfully integrated into his self-narrative. The film even puts a highlighter to this. I didn't do it for him. I didn't do it for him. The paradox that once trapped Loki is solved. He is no longer the periphery being that stands on the side while Thor is celebrated. He can enjoy other people enjoying him while he's not actually himself. So his self-concept has been completely reconfigured. His ideal self is now Loki, the hero who sacrificed himself, who's now even more popular than Thor. His self-image is Odin, which is enacted by simply telling stories about his past heroics for other people to inherit. And his self-esteem is from the acceptance of the Asgardian people. To a large extent, the stage performance is an expression of Loki's hopes and dreams, a narrative arc that he takes pride in and he accepts because everyone sincerely loves it. I did not yet see in you Asgard's saviour, no. You were merely a little blue baby icicle that melted this old fool's heart. Therefore, immediately a new motivating centre is established within Loki's sense of identity. He's not about the preoccupation with continuities, he's about reflections again, but this time it's from love as opposed to hate. There's a theoretical model called the Looking Glass Theory by Charles Cooley, and I've referenced it before a couple of times, but it's a framework that views self-identity as being, I am not who I think I am, I am who I think you think I am. In other words, we tend to fit ourselves into the impressions that we think we give off. And Loki is deeply conscious of all of this, which is why he immediately takes notice that Odin referred to him and thought equally as my sons. My sons. Being addressed that way deeply matters to him because that's always what he wanted and something that he always had, but he was too blinded by a sense of inadequacy to accept it. But here he is, beloved by the culture he grew up with, and like always is accepted by his father, sitting with him as he listens to a story with his brother. Just as how we were introduced to him. This is Loki finally finding peace in the world that he's always belonged in. Hela even thought Loki is more like Odin than Thor, I'm Thor, son of Odin. You don't look like him. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. You sound like him. And when they're both trapped on Sakaar, despite their disagreements, they look out for each other. They are brothers bounded not by blood, but by love. Which is why Loki's heart quietly breaks when Thor just accepts that parting ways is just okay. I'm probably better off staying here on Sakaar. That's exactly what I was thinking. There was a continuity between them, but Loki didn't truly connect with it until now. Because when you strip away the jealousy, the fighting, the lies and mockery, there's simply a pair of siblings who can tolerate all of this because of love. And this is what is reflected back to Loki, and thus, the gap in his identity is finally closed. Loki, I thought the world of you. I thought we were going to fight side by side forever, but at the end of the day, you're you and I'm me. I know maybe they're still good in you, but let's be honest, that path's diverged a long time ago. Therefore, Loki then redeems himself. When he comes back to save Asgard, he performs himself not as a villain, but as a hero. Loki becomes truly the author of his own life with smiles and heroism, like his father before him. You know, maybe you're not so bad after all, brother. 
Maybe not. Thank you. If you're here, I might even give you a hug. Loki has a short appearance in Infinity War, but it's unbelievably important because this is Loki at his most characteristically naked. Who he was has now finally caught up to who he is. All right, stop! Thanos harvested Loki's paradox by giving him the means to exercise his jealousy and hatred. At first, he flirts with the notion of returning back, but he chooses not to. We have a Hulk. He saves his brother, and more importantly, when he declares his status, the identity he puts into words isn't Laufey's son, but Odin's son. He has chosen his community. It's not Thanos or Laufey. It's Thor, it's Odin, it's Frigga. His name is no longer a rejection of his inheritance, but a place of pride. So when he dies trying to kill Thanos, he tries to kill his older self. He fails, ultimately, but that's the tragedy of the character. His life is always a losing competition. Loki is technically still alive right now. He escaped with the Tesseract during the time heist. So even though this most likely means his journey from the Infinity Saga will be directly rewritten. Where's, where's the case? Where's Loki? Loki! This means the artistic purpose to this whole character arc is to map out the limits of his identity. To show the kind of person that Loki was and could be. Being a king is more important than his race identity, being a son is more important than being a king, and ultimately being a brother is more important than being a villain. We are all involved in different repositories of meaning, and Loki shows us that memory is a zone of conflict, because we can't help but to tailor the past to fit with our emotions in the present. But he also shows us that the key is to simply be creative with it. Have fun and embrace everything. <clears throat> I hope I didn't go too far with that final line. 